Hello, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. In uh, previous few lectures, we are discussing about uh, the autoencoders and we have seen that autoencoder is an algorithm which tries to learn uh, a compressed domain representation of the input data or it tries to learn the structure present in the input data. And in order to do that, what you do is given an input data, you pass it through a neural network, which is obviously a multi-layer neural network, where you try to reconstruct whatever input you are feeding, the same signal, the same data you try to reconstruct at the output. But while this information, the data passes from the input to the output layer, it passes through one or more hidden layers. So, in the basic configuration, we have seen that an autoencoder consists of one hidden layer, where the number of nodes in the hidden layer is much less than the number of nodes in the input layer. That is a configuration which is known as under complete autoencoder. So, as it passes through a hidden layer, which is also known as bottleneck layer, the information which while it passes through the hidden layer having a lesser number of nodes than the input layer, the network learns a compressed domain representation. What will happen if the hidden layer contains the same number of nodes as the input layer or the number of nodes which is even larger than the input layer? Later on, of course, we will see other configurations of the autoencoder where such thing is also possible. But in such cases, the autoencoder will learn a compressed domain representation by introducing some constant which we will term as sparsity constant. We will come to that later. But so far, what we have discussed is what is known as under complete autoencoder. So, there if we assume that your number of nodes in the hidden layer is same as the number of nodes in the input layer and obviously the same as number of nodes in the output layer and uh, or even more than that. In that case, it is possible that autoencoder will simply try to memorize the input data and the function that it will learn is a simply identity function whereby wherever is there at the input, the same will be reproduced at the output. But by putting a hidden layer having limited number of nodes known as bottleneck layer as we have just said, the network is forced to learn a compressed domain representation or the network is forced to learn the salient features which are present in the input data. And that is the purpose of an autoencoder. Reconstruction of the input signal is not the purpose of autoencoder. But the purpose of autoencoder is that it learns a compressed domain representation or it learns the salient features in the input data and using this salient features, the decoder side should be able to reconstruct your original data. So, we are actually interested when it comes to the application of autoencoder, we will come to that a bit later. We are actually interested in the output of the hidden layer or the bottleneck layer which is a compressed domain representation. So, we have also seen that as we are talking about the compressed domain representation, this is also nothing but what is known as dimensionality reduction. So, if your number of nodes in the hidden layer is much less than the number of nodes in the input layer, then in the compressed domain representation, the dimensionality of the latent variable which is mapped from the input data, the dimensionality of the latent space data is much less than the dimensionality of the input data. But still, the decoder should be able to reconstruct the input from that reduced data. So, this is what is dimensionality reduction. And we have also discussed in our previous lecture that when we talk about dimensionality reduction, traditionally a very popular method for dimensionality reduction is what is known as principal component analysis. That is the input data is uh, projected onto the eigenvectors 
into the Eigen space. And if the input data is projected into the Eigen vectors, uh, obviously, if you have a set of data which is of dimension d, the number of Eigen vectors will be d number of Eigen vectors. But for every Eigen vector, there will be a corresponding Eigen value. So, when you form the transformation matrix, you form the transformation matrix using the Eigen vectors as rows in the transformation matrix. And when you form this transformation matrix, as we have seen in your previous lecture, that the first row in the transformation matrix will be the Eigen vector corresponding to the ma maximum Eigen value, and the last row in the transformation matrix will be the Eigen vector corresponding to minimum Eigen value. And in between, all the rows are formed by Eigen vectors arranged in descending order of the corresponding Eigen values. So, now for transformation purpose, if we retain only few number of rows in the transformation mat matrix from the top, so we retain only one row. In that case, your d dimensional data is transformed into a one dimensional data, which is nothing but projection onto the Eigen vector having my maximum Eigen value. If we return only two Eigen vectors, then the d dimensional input data will be transformed into two dimensional uh, principal components in Eigen space. And we have also seen through reconstruction with examples of reconstruction that the power of such principal components. So, we have seen with examples that even with one uh, principal component, it is possible to reconstruct most of the information present in the input data. And there we have compared the principal component analysis PCA with autoencoders. And we have seen that in case of autoencoder, if we do not impose any nonlinearity in the neural, in the neurons, in the neural network, then your principal components and the autoencoder outputs, they almost coincide. But we have also discussed that autoencoders are much more powerful than principal components because of the presence, because the neural neurons in the neural network are capable of imposing or implementing nonlinear functions. So, as principal component analysis is a linear transformation from the input space to the Eigen space, autoencoders can give you a nonlinear transformation. So, as because autoencoders can give us nonlinear transformation, we can even represent nonlinear manifolds using the autoencoders, which is not possible using principal components. So, you have seen that if we do not impose the nonlinearity, the nonlinearity in the neurons, or if the activation function of the neurons are linear then autoencoder and principal component analysis, they become almost identical. However, because of the presence of nonlinearity, autoencoder gives us much better representation in lower dimensional space than in case of principal components. So, that is what we have discussed in our previous lectures. So, today what we are going to discuss about is how do you train a deep autoencoder. So, we are talking about deep autoencoder training. Then subsequently, we will talk about other versions of autoencoders like sparse autoencoder, denoising autoencoder, contactive autoencoder and so on. And after few lectures, we will also talk about convolution autoencoder, but I will come to that topic after we discuss about convolution and convolution neural network. So, let us start with how do we learn a deep autoencoder. So, as we told before that in case of deep autoencoder, instead of having only one hidden layer, we have stacks of hidden layers placed one after another. So, that is what is nothing but stacking of different, different autoencoder layers. And the depth of the network depends upon how many such autoencoder layers you have in your autoencoder neural network. 
So, a typical figure of a deep autoencoder is something like this. So, here you find that we have our this input layer. So, this is the layer which is input layer. So, you are feeding your input data x to this input layer. So, obviously, the number of nodes in the input layer we have also told that before is same as the number of elements in vector x plus 1. Why that additional one? Because we also want to incorporate the bias term in the same layer. So, if the dimensionality of the input vector x is d, number of nodes in the input layer will be d plus 1. So, this is what we have discussed before. And then you find that we have a number of autoencoders. So, I can call this one as say the first autoencoder, autoencoder 1, this is the autoencoder 2, this is autoencoder 3 and so on. And here in this configuration, I get the coded output or the reduced dimensional representation, which is also known as latent space representation at the output of autoencoder 3. Of course, each of these autoencoders will give a reduced dimensional representation for the same input, but at a different levels. So, output of autoencoder 1, what you get here is also a coded version of input vector x. Output of autoencoder 2 is also a coded version of input vector x. Here, this is also a coded version of the input vector x. Right? So, this is where we get maximal dimensionality reduction. And once I have this coded output, the coded output is decoded by this decoding layers. Again, I have a number of decoding layers to get my reconstruction or the reconstructed uh, signal exact. So, in case of autoencoder, what we said is we try to reduce the error between x and x hat or the loss function in this case is l x x hat, which we have also said that the loss function that can be defined is sum of squared error. That is what is the error in the construction of x hat when you compare that with input x. And training of the autoencoder or deep autoencoder will try to reduce this error, the sum of squared error to a minimum value. So, you find that in case of autoencoder, we have also said before that I have an encoding part. So, this is a portion which is encoding and this is a part of the autoencoder which is decoding. So, I have an encoding portion and I have a decoding portion and these two taken together forms an autoencoder and the depth or the number of layers that you have auto uh, that you have within this on autoencoder that tells you that what is the power of the autoencoder okay so given this that as we said that for training such autoencoder i want to minimize the loss or minimize the error between the input vector x and the reconstructed vector x hat so what i want ideally is the reconstructed x hat should be identical with my input vector x and that has to be done using the back propagation learning algorithm that we have talked about earlier. Now, you find that the number of weight vectors or number of weight matrices or the number of elements, weight elements that you have to determine by training of the autoencoder is tremendous. So, I have weight uh, matrix W1, I have weight matrix W2, I have weight matrix W3. On the encoder side, on the decoder side, I have weight matrix W3 hash, W2 hash and W1 hash. And the number of weight matrices will go on increasing with the depth of the auto encoder. That is, the deeper the network is, the number of such weight matrices will go on increasing. So, if I try to train this entire autoencoder end to end that is given the full autoencoder architecture, I have the set of training vectors given to the input, I have x hat, x hat as the output and by 
reducing the error between x and x hat, if I try to uh, turn this auto encoder, then I have to deal with so many weight matrices simultaneously. And that leads to a problem. One is obviously the memory problem that I have to save so many weight elements into, into the memory. The other problems are that if the weights that you have is close to the solution weights, the convergence of the learning algorithm is quite easy. But if the weight elements are too large, then finding a global minimum becomes a difficulty. And on the other hand, if the weight elements, because initially all of them are chosen at random. So, if the weight elements becomes too low, in that case the convergence of the learning algorithm becomes very slow. So, to avoid this problem, the kind of approach for training a deep auto encoder can be that you go for a stage called pre-training, which will be finally refined with end to end training mechanism, but before going for that to reduce your complexity, you go for a pre training and this pre training is done layer by layer. That means, while pre training you deal with lesser number of weight matrices. So, let us see that how we how it is actually done. So, we are talking about the layer by layer pre training mechanism. So, while doing this you I take only one layer of auto encoder at a time. So, as before I have this input layer where the input vector x is applied and I take initially only one auto encoder say auto encoder layer 1. And then I put a decoder which decodes the coded output from auto encoder 1. So, because I have only one layer, this decoder output should be uh, same as reconstructed x. So, I call it x hat. And while training this first auto encoder or while trying to determine what will be the value of w 1, you go for back propagation and this back propagation will try to minimize the error between x and x hash x and x hat and while doing so, it learns the weight vectors w 1. And once this weight vector w 1 is learned, then you discard the first level of decoder that we have used. And discarding this, now I put a second auto encoder. Now, before that you find that the output of the auto encoder, which is an encoder uh, which encodes x is say a latent space vector z 1. So, the next level of auto encoder will try to encode this z 1. So, I put the second auto encoder and let me call this second auto encoder as a e 1 a e 2 sorry. So, this a e 2 will try to encode z 1 and while doing so, it will try to learn the weight w 2 or weight matrix w 2. So, to train a e 2, now what I do is I put another decoder of course, these decoders I am putting they are all intermediate finally, these decoders will not be there. So, I put another decoder and this decoder tries to decode the output of auto encoder 2. That means, it will try to reconstruct z 1 which is input to uh, input to auto encoder 2 and I call this z 1 hat. And for this learning the back propagation learning it will consider only the auto encoder 1, auto encoder 2 and the decoder that we have used. And while training this, it will try to minimize the error between z 1 and z 1 hash uh, and z 1 hat. And once that training is complete, that learning is complete, what we have learnt is the weight matrix w 2. And once weight matrix w 2 is learnt, you remove this second decoder that we have placed and there the auto encoder 2 let me assume the output of the auto encoder 2 is z 2. And after I got this I 
put the third autoencoder say a e 3. This is third autoencoder a e 3. So, now we have to train this third on autoencoder that means, we have to find out that what are the weight what is the weight matrix w 3. So, again for training this I put another decoder over here and this decoder will decode the output of autoencoder 3. So, you find that the input to autoencoder 3 was z 2 which was the output of autoencoder 2. So, this last decoder that we are talking about this decoder will try to decode this z 2 coded by autoencoder 3 to give you z 2 hat. And for doing this the layers which are involved is only these layers and it will try to minimize the error or the loss function between z 2 and z 2 hat or l z 2 z 2 hat. And once that is trained, so you find that we have the pre trained values of w 1, w 2 and w 3. And if I assume that this is the last autoencoder layer that we had in our dip uh, autoencoder, then the next part comes is the decoder part. So, to set the decoder, so what I have to do is I have to again remove this autoencoder, I have to have a decoder part. So, the decoder that you put is this by wrapping the encoder side and by taking the corresponding weights in the decoder side you take the transposes of the encoder weights. So, this forms the total auto encoder uh, or the encoder decoder pair which forms the total auto encoder. So, here you find that w 1, w 2 and w 3 they were pre trained by using layer by layer mechanism, layer by layer learning mechanism. Now, I have this decoder also forming a full auto encoder and now you go for fine tuning or finer training of the weight vectors. For that on the decoder side you initially assume that the weights are w 3 prime, w 2 prime and w 1 prime. Now, you try to train this entire auto encoder chain using end to end training mechanism. That is you feed your training vector x to the input, output of the auto encoder becomes x hat which is the reconstructed value of x and by back propagation learning you try to minimize the loss function between x and x at which is l x x at. And here you find that because the encoder side was pre trained. So, the values of the weight matrices w 1, w 2, w 3 are close to the actual values. And while you go for this end to end training, now we have a set of values which are very close to the actual, the convergence of this training algorithm is much better than convergence of the algorithm if we try to train the entire network at a time. So, this is what is layer by layer uh, pre training. So, what we have to do is after the pre training is complete, we have to introduce the decoder part and then for fine tuning of the pre trained weights, I have to go for one or more iterations for end to end training, giving the input as x and the output encoder output of the auto encoder x hat, try to reduce the error between x and x hat using the gradient descent or back propagation learning mechanism. So, that will ensure the convergence. Uh, to be faster and likely to attain uh, the global minimum of the loss function. So, this is what is uh, the pre training the layer by layer, layer pre training of auto encoder. Now, suppose my auto encoder is trained. So, what the auto encoder is giving me giving an, an input x the encoder side actually gives me say a function f of x that is my encoding function. And so, decoding let me call it a function g. So, this gives me decoding of f of x. 
So, what is my x hat? x hat is nothing but g of f x. So, the training mechanism try to minimize the error between f x and g of f x and that is how you uh, try to find that x and x hat will be identical when the autoencoder is properly trained. Okay. So, given this as we said before that we are not really interested in the reconstruction part. I have input x, what do I do with x hat? That is not my aim, but my aim is actually the output of the autoencoder that is the latent space representation of the reduced space representation that I get from x and as we said that what I get at the output of the autoencoder say let me call this as output vector h which contains the salient features present in x after discarding the redundancies or non salient features which are present in x. So, h will contain the salient features and that is in the reduced dimension. So, using h how I can go for further applications. So, one of the applications that can be there are various applications. So, one of the applications can be say classification. So, what I have is I have input vector, vector x. Uh, so, this input vector x the output of the autoencoder gives me h and here this h can be fed to a classifier for classification. It is not necessary that classifier this classifier has to be a neural network it can be any classifier. It can be a support vector machine, it can be a base classifier or whatever which we have discussed earlier. But let us assume that we have a neural network we have talked about multi layer perceptron before. So, I can feed a multi layer perceptron or MLP over here. So, the input to MLP is H and output of the MLP is the class identification of H or eventually the class identification of the input vector X. So, now we find that what the autoencoder does is it gives a coded output age of x, it does not give you what is uh, the class belongingness of age or what is the class belongingness of x. So, if for the training vectors the class belongingness of x is also known that is the training vectors are given in the form of x y where x is uh, the input vector and y is the class. Then Again, I can go for an end to end training fine with finer refining of the weight matrices w 1, w 2, w 3 and now this training, this back propagation training will consider the output of this MLP or will consider the loss function with the output of the MLP. That also we have seen before, it can be cross entropy it can be again uh, sum of squared error. So, various such uh, output error functions. So, the loss function can be defined which is defined at the output of the MLP depending upon whether the class say y hash which is decided by this MLP taking this h that matches with y or not. If it matches with y, then there is no error or no training required. If it does not match, then obviously we have to train this entire neural network with back progression learning again. And during that time also, this w1 to w3, this encoder encoder weight matrices can be defined further. This is one of the application. The other application can be even I can go for say pixel classification or segmentation operation of an input image. So, for that what I can do is suppose I have an image and input, you take various patches of this input image, convert that into a vector and feed that to the input. And as we have seen before that output of the auto encoder will contain the salient features of each of these image blocks that is what the autoencoder is doing. And then at the output again I put a classifier. What this classifier will do? 
it will put this input matrix, the input image or patch of the image into one of the classes. And if that class and using that again I can form an error function or a loss function and the auto encoder can again be trained using this loss function. And finally, once the auto encoder is trained again, now you feed an input image, again feed all the different blocks of the input image to this auto encoder. The auto encoder will give a salient or the latent space representation of each of the blocks and the blocks can be classified by this trained uh, MLP. So, thereby I can classify each and every block in the image which is nothing but a segmentation operation. I can also consider this to be a pixel by pixel classification or uh, the semantic segmentation of the input image. And for that what I can do is given a patch in the image whatever representation I am getting at the output I can consider that this is the salient features of the central pixel of this patch. So, this is my central pixel. So, this classifier output basically classifies this central pixel. So, as I take different blocks of the image and pass it through the auto encoder and classifier uh, chain, the classifier output will classify each and every pixel which is the center of the block. So, it will classify each and every pixel within the image to different classes. So, the classification of pixels to different classes is nothing but segmentation of the input image. So, the input image or the pixels in the sin of the input image are now classified into different class and all the pixels belonging to the same class that forms a particular segment. So, today what we have discussed is that how you can train an auto encoder. We have talked about layer by layer training of the auto encoder and once the auto encoder is trained, what can be possible applications of such auto encoder. So, we will stop here today. Thank you.